Hi, Professor Gassimi here with CSE 842. For those of you who are new students at MSU, I'd like to welcome you to East Lansing. And those of you who've been away from the summer, I'd like to welcome you back to East Lansing. CSE 842 is a class about natural language processing. I'd like to start the semester by giving you an introduction to me and my domain of research and how that touches on natural language processing. We'll then, for the remainder of the lecture today, uh, jump into the syllabus. And starting next week, we're going to be discussing the first uh, solid pieces of the course content. So first, a little bit about me. Um, I've been a professor here at MSU for about a year now. Um, before I joined Michigan State University, I actually worked as a director of data science at S&P Global in New York City. And one of the key things that we worked on at S&P Global was natural language processing, actually. What my lab does at Michigan State University is something that we call augmented intelligence. That's when you take an algorithm and you try to uh, design it so that what the algorithm does when combined with a human does more than either what the algorithm could do alone or what the person could do alone. So you're augmenting a person through some algorithmic work. I think it's worth just spending maybe a minute or so kind of motivating why you should be interested in it. A lot of uh, startup companies, for example, are touting the ability of NLP to uh, develop smart chatbots, for example. There's a lot of companies that are uh, using NLP to take unstructured information like web pages and turn it into structured information uh, like columns in a CSV sheet, for example. There's dialogue systems that are getting created. There's obviously examples like IBM's Watson, which you may have heard of. And then, of course, there's the assistant that shows up on our phones, right? Siri or whatever your equivalent of Siri is. So all of these things belong to the domain of natural language processing. Now, um, let's talk for a minute about natural language. What is natural language? Because that's what we're going to be processing in the course of this, uh, this next 16 weeks or so. Well, natural language is actually referring to human language in this case, because one could make an argument, of course, that anything that exists in nature is natural. But the natural language that we will be speaking about is speech, text, basically anything that's ingested by your sensory organs and used to paint a mental representation within your mind's eye. So another way of thinking about that is that natural language processing is about performing statistical analysis and first order logical reasoning about symbols, okay, where those symbols can be a string of characters, it could be a sound bite, or it could even be an image. I think one way to help us motivate uh, natural language and why it's interesting from an artificial intelligence perspective is by means of an example. So um, let's think about the word tree. When I say the word tree, each of you in the class probably has a slightly different idea or let's say mental image that gets created when I say that word. If you grew up in a desert region, maybe it's a palm tree. If you grew up here in the Midwest, maybe it's an oak tree. And if you grew up somewhere else, it's some other kind of tree. Now what's really powerful about language is that I can just add very slight changes to it. Like I can add the word red before the word tree. So I can say red tree. And now all of a sudden, the picture in your mind's eye changes completely. And that's really what's powerful about language, right? It allows me to uh, show an image. It allows me to create sounds or uh, produce text that runs sort of like software would on a machine, but the language sort of runs as software on your mind. And that's extremely powerful. It's one of the, the reasons that we as a species have been able to uh, create things like educational systems where you are right now, where we can sort of transact information and have you learn a whole bunch of things without having to formally go through the experimental processes that the people before you did. And I think some of the future trajectories of the machine learning field will be focusing on natural language. Um, and the reason is because Natural language processing, although it contains elements of pattern recognition, is not all about pattern recognition. I think the easiest way for me to explain that is uh, by way of an example. Let's assume I gave you the sentence, the ball smashed through the table because, 
it was glass. And that sentence is vague, but let's say I forced you to make an assumption about what glass refers to in that sentence. So the ball smashed through the table because it was glass. Well, you'd probably do some reasoning and say, hey, you know, if, the, if, if two things have smashed, glass is kind of easy, easier to smash through than some other material, so the table must be glass in that sentence. Okay, well, what you just did there, or what we did together, was you used some intuitive understanding about physics and the way that the physical world works in order to parse that sentence. So that is to say that your, your background, your prior knowledge of physics was extremely important to taking that vague sentence and interpreting it, as evidenced by the fact that I can just change one word in that sentence and your way of interpreting it is likely to, to change. So let's take the sentence now and say, instead of the ball smashed through the table because it was glass, let's say the ball smashed through the table because it was steel. Now what is the word steel most likely referring to? Well, probably the ball, because the ball is doing the smashing through the table. And it's more likely, given the very limited knowledge we have about this, that you know the steel is what's doing the smashing. So why do I bring that up? Well, because you could, you could try to pattern recognize or use kind of the positions of words in a sentence like that as much as you wanted, but without that intuitive understanding of physics, you'd never really be able to easily discriminate between how steel refers to ball in one case and, steel, and glass refers to table in the other. And so it's thinking through the complexities of a problem like that and how it goes beyond simple pattern recognition that makes the field of natural language processing one of the domains where I think artificial intelligence is going to see some exciting advances. So having said that, what we're going to be doing for the remainder of this lecture is I'm going to jump very soon to a view of the slides and um, I'm going to take you through the syllabus. I thought it'd be great for you to have an opportunity to see my face before we do that. Um, you should feel comfortable reaching out to me anytime and throughout the course of the semester I'm going to not only try to facilitate ways for us to interact, whether it's digitally or in person, but also I'm going to try to facilitate ways, maybe through some of the assignments, that you can interact with some of your classmates as well.